This lesson will be a brief overview on general GI physiology and focus a little bit on the physiology or the mechanism of swallowing and food passing through the esophagus. First, in the most general terms, the GI tract is a tube, the alimentary tube, in which food enters. It starts, typically starts from the oral cavity, goes into the pharynx, goes into the pharynx, and then eventually goes into the esophagus, where it continues down into the stomach, the small intestine, large intestine, colon, and rectum, and eventually back out. Before we talk about the esophagus and the mouth, the, the alimentary tube is composed of a couple of main structures, or a couple of main layers. They vary by where you are in, in the GI system, but there's a couple of main layers that this, whose similarities persist throughout the tract. The first layer is the mucosal layer. This mucosal layer has, first and foremost, the epithelium, in regions of the GI tract where there's a lot of absorption, such as the small intestine, the epithelium has lots of villi, or protrusions, that looks like fingers, and microvilli that increases the surface area to allow for greater absorption. In addition, in the mucosa, there's the lamina propina, which contains capillaries, nerves, immune systems, immune cells, and a lot of the other supportive cells to support the epithelium. In addition, in the mucosa is a mucosal muscularis, which is a layer of muscle. And there are further layers, there's further layers further on, but this essentially is the mu mucosal layer. Directly beneath the mucosa is the submucosa. which is a layer of more capillaries, nerves, and other support supporting cells. Underneath the submucosa is the muscular muscularis externus, which is the bulk of the muscle in the alimentary tract throughout the GI tract. In particular, they follow two main layers. The first layer, I'll draw like this, shows that they are circular. Imagine that you're looking at the tube face on. These muscles would be circumfer circumferential, whereas the layer right underneath would be longitudinal. And in this, it would look like this. But both both layers of muscle are contained within the muscularis externus. And at the very bottom is the serosa, which is the layer of epithelium, or sorry, layer of epithelium and other just basic cells that separate the GI tract from the rest of the body. This would include the visceral pleura. In general, the GI tract has a couple of main functions. They include digestion, which includes both physical and chemical means to break down food into little bits that can be absorbed. So the second term is absorption. Typically the body absorbs chemicals, either lipids, fats, proteins, or, or carbohydrates in their most basic components as monosaccharides and amino acids. The GI tract also has secretion. In fact, the Bile acid is actually the main route of secretion for cholesterol, as well as absorption, or as well as excretion. As the bile acid is one of the few ways where the body can excrete heavy metals such as iron and copper, as well as get rid of waste products and bacteria. In, ad in addition to these digestive processes, there's also a defensive process. Through our food, we come into contact with a large variety of bacteria as well as toxins, and our immune system and a lot of other non 
non-immunologic responses, such as type junctions and secretion of like neutralizing acids or bases, are used to prevent infection or detrimental effect of environmental hazards. So next, I'd like to talk about the control of the GI tract. First, the GI tract is under neuro neurological control, neuro neuronal control, whereas the GI tract actually has its own it actually has its own nervous system called the enteric nervous system, which is part of the autonomic nervous system and actually regulates the peristalsis and a lot of the other digestive mechanisms that we just don't think about. There's a variety of nervous plexes that are throughout the body, that throughout the GI tract, that are critical for the enteric nervous system. In particular, there are submucosal. Uh, nervous plexus, submucosal in this layer, as well as as well as myenteric, which is in the mus muscular layer. The enteric nervous system regulates regulates sensing, in which it can sense pH, um, osmolality, and a lot of other functions required for seeing what is inside the lumen of the GI tract, as well as muscular contraction, peristalsis. So that's why there's um, neuronal plexus in both of these layers. In addition to neuronal control, there's, there's hormonal and there's hormonal endocrine and paracrine control. In fact, the GI tract is actually known as the first organ system in which hormones were first discovered. Anecdotally, it was first when scientists got, discovered that they can. There's an extract from the small intestine that can cause pancreatic excretion, where they termed, where they named the term hormones and described how small peptides can regulate our the body. Next, I'd like to talk about the act of digestion in the chewing, the mastication, the secretion of saliva, and then the swallowing reflex. First, the first phase is called the cephalic phase of digestion, in which there is the anticipa anticipatory phase, in which the body senses, or th you think, the brain thinks that there is food to be had and gets ready for eating. This is primarily a PANS response. Remember, PANS is known as the rest and digest organ, rest and digest, whereas SANS is known as SANS is known as the fight or flight. So SANS upregulates the cephalic response, allows for excretion of acid, pep pepsinogen, a variety of other gastric enzymes, which is upregulated. Also increases the amount of saliva secretion. Saliva is actually really important because it first has amylase properties. A little bit of carbohydrate digestion actually occurs within your mouth. Second, it is slightly basic, which prevents, which, which prevents bacteria from colonizing your mouth, and also maintains the pH of the esophagus. One of the main problems with one of the main major problems is um, acid reflux or GERD, which is partially countered by the basic pH of the saliva. So there are three main stages of the swallowing reflex. The first stage is the oral phase. This is when the food is in your mouth and you are actively masticating, chewing it, and using your tongue to mix up the food with saliva and break it down into smaller pieces. The second phase is the phar phar pharyngeal phase. And contrary to the oral phase, this is involuntary. This is when food moves into your pharynx. To prevent food from getting into the lungs, the larynx actually contracts. The, your soft palate at the, at the roof of your mouth flips up to prevent food from getting into the oral pharynx. And this causes relaxation of the upper esophageal sphincter, the UES 
which moves to the third phase, which is the esophageal phase. The, the esophageal phase is a wave of muscular motion termed peristalsis, in which there's regulated regulated contraction of regular contraction and relaxation of both the longitudinal and the circumferential circumferential layers of muscle to push food or the bolus down. There's primary peristalsis in which the food itself is pushed down and secondary peristalsis in which it, whatever is remaining in the esophagus is pushed down further or get or the esophagus is cleaned. Esophageal spasms is actually known as tertiary peristalsis, and this is actually a pathological state. In summary, the GI tract is made of four main layers, the mucosal layer, the submucosal layer, the muscularis, muscularis externus, and the serosa, which work together to do most of the main functions of the GI tract, such as digestion, absor absorption, secretion, excretion, and defensive mechanisms. And this is all tightly regulated by both hormonal and neuronal responses to prevent overdigestion and to ready the body for digestion. For in terms of the esophagus and the pharynx and the mouth, there is a swallowing reflex which composes of the oral phase, pharyngeal phase, and esophageal phase, in which a first, which first, a voluntary digestion of movement of the mouth into the pharynx causes an involuntary phase, two involuntary phases in which the bolus moves out of the pharynx into the esophagus which, and finally into the stomach.